Well, this is a surprise. Hey everyone, this is James from Brewing Books. So finally, after waiting what seemed like a long, long time, I finally received my copy of the deluxe edition of The Nature of Middle Earth. So without further ado, let's look into this. The Nature of Middle Earth is being referred to as the first ever publication of J.R.R. Tolkien's final writings on Middle Earth. This book is a collection of essays edited by Carl Hostetter, in which Tolkien delves deeper into a vast range of topics from Middle Earth, including detailed explanations of the flora and fauna of his fantasy world. In addition, readers are also given unique insight into the immortality of elves and their reincarnation, the Valar and their powers, Numenor, geographies and a host of other subjects, including mathematical calculations concerning the time and aging of Arda. So basically the book is divided into three parts, part one being on time and aging, part two body, mind and spirit, and part three the world, its lands and its inhabitants. Also included at the end are appendices, an expected tradition now in newly published Tolkien books. I must say this book is filled to the brim with topics and essays and I honestly wasn't expecting this much material to be included. If you've read all the usual suspects including uh, The Silmarillion, The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings together with the History of Middle-earth series and Unfinished Tales, this book will feel like a natural extension to all that body of work and offer even more. It's even being called by some readers as the 13th or 14th volume, depending on how you see it, of the History of Middle-earth series. Such is its importance in the study and analysis of Tolkien and his work. Now, I haven't read all the books in the History of Middle-earth series, However, I suspect that whilst the majority of the Nature of Middle-earth book contains new material, I somehow think that there might be one or two topics that have already been published previously. I don't know, I have yet to read the book, so I stand to be corrected on this. As to the presentation of the book itself, as usual with other deluxe editions, it is quarter bound and housed in this matching custom built slipcase, stamped in gold foil with a gorgeous rendition of this unique motif known as the Tree of Amalion. An interesting fact, Tolkien drew and designed this tree himself, which represented the tales and stories he crafted, which are represented in each leaf and flower that grows out of it. Now, what is interesting in particular about the slipcase is the almost exact color as a previously published Tolkien edition, and that is Beowulf, a translation and commentary. There is of course a slight variation in color between the two, but they are so similar that at first glance you'd think they're practically the same book. Why the publishers decided to do this is honestly beyond me, but I think it still looks fabulous. And now comes what I personally think is one of the best presentation features about this book. So as we open up the covers, both front and back, we can see a replica of Tolkien's own writings, a series of mathematical calculations uh, that adorn the insides of these covers. And this more feature actually just gives this particular Tolkien book a different feel above the rest of the deluxe series. Uh, as usual, the printing is done on heavyweight acid-free paper and of course includes the ribbon marker. Included is also an exclusive fold-out colour frontispiece painting by Tolkien artist Ted Nesmith. And apart from all that, we obviously have the most important thing, the essays themselves. Carl Hostetter can be considered as one of the world's leading Tolkien experts and I have no doubt that the arrangement and presentation of such important essays has been left in very good and capable hands. I honestly just can't wait to dive in and start reading this. I think it actually might be one of the most insightful books into Tolkien's secondary world and his process of writing that we have yet seen so far. 
Obviously, the nature of the content itself is quite academic and heavy going, so don't go into the book with an easy mind. It's not supposed to be a relaxed read, but rather a more uh, analytical approach towards the different subjects on offer. But still, that shouldn't daunt you from getting a copy of this book and really delving into this wonderful author and his truly remarkable way of creating such a breathtaking and deep and complex fantasy world. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm off to read some essays from the nature of Middle Earth. In the meantime, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers.